Okay, so I want to show a couple of different, uh, I think it's going to be three or four different integrations uh, in the Ultra environment. And just to kind of give you a little, little bit idea of, of what's available and kind of where they show up and how they can be used. The very first thing that I want to talk about, though, is for those admins in the room, just a little bit about how these get set up and configured if you haven't already done this before. I won't spend too much time on this, but I will say that when setting up an LTI and or LTI and REST integration, those instructions and details will come from the partner. They'll come from the vendor. They'll come from the developer. They don't come from Blackboard. It's more of the, you know, that partner product or that vendor saying, here's how you set us up in Blackboard. I'll just walk you through one example. I'll use the example of Kaltura for this, but you'll see some others on this, on this demo server. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is looking at our LTI tool providers. And just before I go on, I'm sure you can see my screen here. I'm on an administrator tools panel. Um, I'm looking at LTI tool providers. Can everybody see this okay? I see you, Derek. Great. So on this particular demo server, you're seeing I have a variety of partner set up, and this is just that. It is a demo server. Not every single thing on here works perfectly because, well, there's about 900 admins on here that change things all the time. But for this, I've got a few that I know work, at least I verified them an hour ago. Um, so we'll take a look at what these look like. I'm going to look at the Kaltura one just as an example, but all of them kind of have the same idea. So setting up an LTI tool provider typically involves two steps. The second step might have multiple parts, depending on what product you're setting up. The first step is always going to be to register the provider domain. And this involves, again, getting these fields and getting the values for these fields from the vendor or partner in question. So there's going to be a partner domain, or sorry, a provider domain. There's going to be a key in secret. They may they'll probably end up doing it globally, and there's going to be some of this basic policy data set. Once that gets submitted, you can then take it on to the next step. Let's take a look at what it actually looks like. So I'm going to look at Kaltura's, for example. So provider domain, key in secret, and these are the options. Again, I followed an instruction sheet from Kiltura. They were like, if you want this set up, fill these things in. I filled them in. One, and they, they even have a custom couple of custom parameters, but I took this right from the instructions they sent me. Once that's added, then you have the ability to define placements. So placements are exactly that. Where does this product, this tool, this integration manifest in your Blackboard experience? Is it at the course level? Is it at the system level? Maybe it's in multiple places in a course. Maybe a given vendor has one or more tools. And that's one of the reasons why I like to use Kaltura's example, because they do have multiple tools. Let's take a look at their placements. So, and again, the names are all, you know, the names are, are the names can be changed. I put LTI in all of these for demo purposes, but you don't have to have those words on there. But you'll see here, I've got a variety of different placement types. I've got a deep linking content tool, a course content tool, one system tool. And you can also see from the endpoints, again, provided by Kaltura, these tell Blackboard where to communicate to, that, get, to get to that resource. And you'll even see like a couple of these are the same, except the tools show up in different places. And again, all of this provided by Kaltura, but the adding the placements are very easy. So you can come in and you give it a label, you choose the availability, you pick the kind, you might upload an icon, and the URL and the key, and the, these all get inherited from the other setting. This entire piece takes like under 10 minutes to do, done once by the admin through instructions from the vendor. Once that's done, you might be finished, depending on the integration. In Kaltura's case, and with many of the more robust ones, you're not done in the sense that they use LTI, but they're also leveraging components of our REST API framework to make the integration that much better. Do you have to? No. But if you do, and they've done it, then it makes the integration better. Some providers have decided not to leverage our REST APIs, and that's fine. It'll still work. It just may not be as robust, and that's gonna, you know, that'll be on them, but some integrations don't need more than that. Kaltura definitely needed more than that. So the second step is, again, from the admin perspective, I come into REST API integrations and I add in that provider uh, here. And what does this do? What this does is this is a way for your local Blackboard admin to add in a application that is authorized to communicate through, our dev through Blackboard's dev portal and then onto that vendor, that provider, that partner, um, or that platform, wherever it has to talk out to. And it's pretty easy. When you come in and hit create, create integration, you are putting in the application ID provided to you by the partner. You are assigning it a learn user that has the right um, level of system admin access. And you're going to pick these two options based on what the partner tells you. What does it look like for one that I've already done? Let's take a look at Kaltura's. All I did was I put in their application ID, the application developer pre-populate, 
I gave it a local system admin user and I set the settings. And at this point, the Kaltura integration that leverages REST APIs and LTI is set up and ready to go. Here's the cool part. On this actual server, not only have I set up Kaltura using REST and API, which I've done that because I want to use it in my Ultra courses, and I like to use it in my original view courses, and it works. This server still also has the Kaltura building block on here, and I can use the Kaltura building block tools in my original view courses without any problem. It all coexists. In fact, they all point to the same galleries. Does it look a little different? Yeah, because the original courses look a little different. The integration done by a building block looks a little different. But the same video assets, the same video player, and the same user workflow on the Kaltura side, that all exists no matter how I use it. If it sounds confusing, I would encourage you to look at it a different way. This is an enabling support of both legacy and future-proof kind of items at the same time as we roll through this transitional phase without telling your instructors or your students, nope, can't do that anymore, you only get this. We support both. How you choose to roll it out at your institution, that is up to you. I have, had, I have had some clients say, all right, we're not going to do both. We're going to de deprecate the building block. And since the, the REST API integration does everything the building block did, we're going to get rid of the building block. And I have other clients say, nope, I want to use the building block in my original courses. We'll use the other integration in my ultra course. That's fine. That's totally fine. They, it all coexists nicely. Nothing conflicts. So that's an example of what it looks like to set up a, a, a REST API and LTI integration. Um, in Blackboard, let's take a look at what that looks like when we go to the course itself. So I'm gonna come back over to a course, I'm gonna go into a course, and I'm, I'm in as an admin, but I'm also in as an instructor here. So let's pop into this uh, general biology course, and let's take a look at using the Kaltura integration, or the variety of places that it can be served up. So the first place um, that's kind of nice from the instructor perspective is I can go into my books and tools area. And if I do that, I'm going to see a set of tools here that are course tools that have been authorized to show up. So one of those placements that I did for LTI for Kaltura was a course tool. And you can see I've got my Kaltura Media Gallery course tool. Now in this gallery, I don't have anything, but when I click it, it loads. I haven't added anything, but I can. If I go add media right on the fly, I can decide to publish media from my existing personal gallery into this course gallery. And what you're seeing here is all Kaltura functionality. It's not coming from Blackboard. It's just rendering nicely within this kind of Blackboard flyover panel. I now have added in my media. I can also go so far as to say, well, you know what, I'm gonna add media, but what I see in here is not what I want. I could add new media. And on the fly, I could use Kaltura's built-in media upload tool, their capture, YouTube, video quiz. Again, all of this is Kaltura. I can even go in and leverage some of their analytics tools. I can edit individual videos, and that's pretty cool. If I go edit videos, I can go through and you know change different things about the videos. I'm not going to do that here now, but you know I can decide how I want certain details to show up. I can edit playlists. I can make new playlists, and I haven't even left my Blackboard course. I haven't even put a link in my Blackboard course yet. I'm just leveraging the Kaltura Media tool as an instructor from my course tools panel. But let's go over to more a more common use case. I'm gonna do two of them. One is gonna be, I want my students to have access to all the videos for this course. That's use case number one. Use case number two is gonna be, I want to place a specific video in line in one of my chapter folders because it goes with that type of content. So I'll do both of those. Let's start with that kind of high-level gallery first. So I'll go into course content and I'm gonna click the plus here and I'm gonna go over to content market. Now the content market screen is kind of divided up into two main sections. The stuff at the top is the, con is the true content market coming from like publishers and content providers. And, and that's kind of done by the admin as well. But these, and you can see who's, who's up there. It's typically your publishers. The stuff below is going to be those institutional level tools that were set up by your admin and Kaltura is one of them. So if I go look, these are some of the options I have available for Kaltura. Now I can decide to add a link to my media gallery but I also have some other options in here that I might wanna see. I'm gonna do that first use case. I want my students to have a link that when they click it, they see all the videos for this course. So I'll start with that. I'm gonna click this little plus and it's gonna put that link right there. I can decide to show it to my students and it's ready to go. When it's clicked by me or the students, it takes me directly to the gallery for the course. And there's those two videos you saw earlier. That's that, that's all that link is gonna ever do because that's the kind of link I decided to add. And this is helpful for many use cases. 
But let's take a look at that second use case. What if we are talking about you know, molecules of life, or better yet, maybe this nucleic acids. And I've got a video that kind of goes in line with this. Maybe I want them to watch the video, and then maybe I want them to discuss, and then maybe take the assignment. So instead of just putting a link to all the videos for the course, I want to call attention to a specific video at this part of my teaching and learning workflow. So I'm going to click my plus here. Same idea. I'm going to go to Content Market. And from here, though, instead of picking the Media Gallery, I'm going to do this Kaltura Embed tool. And what this lets me do is it looks very similar, but it's different. Because what's happening here is I get to see my gallery, but instead of just a link to the gallery, it's asking me what video do I want to specifically choose to embed into my Blackboard course. And the one that I want is this enzyme function and inhibition. Before I embed it though, and thanks to the whole REST API bit, so a lot of people say like, well, what's the difference? Why would somebody use REST APIs? Why not just LTI? I'll show you why. I could probably get away with doing something like this with just LTI. Kaltura decided that's not enough. They want to have an integration a little better, a little more robust that provides a little more functionality. So they used our REST APIs to add that extra layer on. And what, what one example of what they were able to achieve by also using our REST APIs is this. So if I click this little gear here, Kaltura provides me as the instructor the ability to control the player I want, the max embed size they want, a couple other options. The cool thing is they can add features to this whenever they want. This is all in Kaltura. None of this is happening in Blackboard. It looks like it is, but it's not. This is being driven by Kaltura. And thanks to the REST APIs, the settings that I make using Kaltura functionality on this page will then propagate into my Blackboard course. I'm not going to change these settings for now. I'm just going to click embed. What happens is I come back to my Blackboard course, and the video I selected is now in line. I should also add, and this is part of that forward looking, you'll notice that the icons are kind of boring and there's no thumbnails. That's something we're working on future looking. I'm not going to say due dates and things like that, but we wanted first to make sure these things worked like they were supposed to, that they were responsive, that they met accessibility guidelines, and that they flowed. And the next phase to look at how can we enhance these visually? Do we do thumbnails? Is there a smaller player? Does it expand? Those kinds of things. That's, that's something, that's a phase that we are now entering. Um, again, don't know when that's going to happen, but that's the next step. However, when I click this link, what happens is flyover panel and the video directly loads. I'm still in my Blackboard course, but it is loading using the Kaltura video player. And you can even see the little Kaltura icon there. And here, so that's two examples of what an instructor can do to place Kaltura tools right within their course. So we've already explored actually three different tools. One was that kind of general high-level course tool available to instructor. Another, we used two different placements within the course content area. And I want to show you one more. So let's talk about that system level tool. I know for a lot of schools, and actually more so than I originally thought, you know, I've been at Blackboard 15 years, and I've done consulting on site for nine of those 15 years. And I've done a lot of implementations for the community portal and that kind of thing. And I, I really thought that at this point, it wasn't being used as much, but I was wrong. What happened when Kaltura first released their integration using REST APIs and LTI is they didn't have a system level tool that functioned in an ultra enabled environment. And my personal thought was, oh, no big deal. I was wrong. We have a lot of clients, a lot of students, a lot of instructors that want to be able to access their media galleries from outside of the perspective of a particular course. And so what, what am I talking about? I'm talking about not being in a course, but maybe I'm on the institution page, or maybe I'm in the tools area. And we now have the ability, and Kaltura is an example of one of those abilities, to be able to place system level tools in the ultra base navigation, and they actually work like they're supposed to. And I can drive right to the Kaltura My Media tool because that is a system level placement. Does every vendor or partner offer that? No. Could they? Yes, they could. Um, and that often will require a little extra work on their end, but Blackboard now supports it. And we have been working with a variety of our partners, those that it's relevant for, to be able to have that option, especially since many of our clients have been asking for it. So it is supported. It does work. It just, you know, some of the partners may not caught up to enhance the integrations, the ability to do that yet, but it, we do have that ability to do it. And it works like it's supposed to. And then from here, I can watch any of these videos. So that's an example of kind of one integration in Blackboard, one using LTI and REST APIs. And while I know that this is an ultra uh, you know, focused presentation, I do want to just 
point out the fact that if I go into an original course view on this server, I can see all of the Kaltura tools. I can see Kaltura Media, all these LTI ones, and that's why I labeled them this way. These are coming from that LTI integration I set up, but I also have a Kaltura Media option over here under mashups. That's coming from the building block. And because the building block still works when we're talking about original view courses, and it also works the same, because if I click Kaltura Media and I'm using the building block, what will load in here, does this look familiar? It's the same gallery. I can do it that way, or I can also just, you know, be, be in a correspondent area and decide to go do it this way. And if I add this link, it's going to make a link that's clickable and go to my Kaltura Media Gallery. They coexist side by side within those original courses if you want them to. So that's an example of what the Kaltura integration looks like. 